history of both police and city of Concord. So Thank you, Your Honor. The scene has no further questions at this time. Thank you. Right, Mr. Ian, this is your opportunity to cross-examine this witness. And just to be clear, it's, it's not the time for you to testify on your own behalf. If you wish to do that, you certainly will have that opportunity. But right now, uh, it's your opportunity to cross-examine this witness. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. So, Mr. Curl, you said you've been a sergeant with the Concord Police Department since 2008. And what length of time have you been the midnight shift supervisor? Probably early 2009. I had a six month tour of evening shift supervisor and then went to midnight. What do your duties entail? I oversee the shift. So the other officers report to you? Yes. You began your testimony today, and it's consistent with your written report of notes from after the event, that you were traveling on White Street when you observed bicyclists, correct? Do you recall how soon after the event it was that you wrote your notes on the incident? I don't. May have been a few days? No, not usually. It's not that long of a time frame. Do you consider your written testimony to be an accurate record of events? Sure. Do you consider your written testimony to be a complete record of events? Your Honor, I'm just going to object to the use of the word testimony as to the written version. Um, I believe he's referring to the officer's report in this case. And his testimony would be the oral testimony that he just gave under oath to this court. Um, just to differentiate, the, the police report has not been introduced into evidence or the notes that you're referring to. Okay. So what he has the state indicated, what um, Sergeant, the Sergeant Verbal has said, orally is the testimony. If there's something that you're trying to impeach or something, what you would need to do is first say you wrote this report, ask him if he needs to take a precious recollection. I, I'm not sure that's where you're going, but that would be the steps you would need if that's what you're trying to do. Okay. Excuse me, I don't understand. Would you consider your testimony today to be a complete record of the events that you did? A complete record? No. The notes on the back of my summons are just exactly what they are, notes to refresh my memory. Do you remember if there's anything that you may have uh, written in your notes that I should see? I don't feel that apple. 
helpful at that time. Okay. So you will note in your testimony that I was audio recording, right? I mean, excuse me, your testimony. You will note in your notes from the incident that you recall that I was recording, right? You said that. Okay, you said that. Okay. So just to clarify, do you feel that there were any
Well, if you'll notice, there's a little scale down here. Uh, there is about 100 meters, there's of course 100 meters being over 300 feet. And there's the distance between the parking lot and Beacon Street. But you you testified that you were driving on White Street. So, For what reason did you decide to follow the bicyclists? I'm sorry? For what reason did you decide to follow the bicyclists? Uh, I should notice one bicycle that I would like. Okay. And this was while you were traveling perpendicular to the travel of the bicyclists? I was on White Street and the bicyclists came from my left on Beacon, which would be a western direction. Are you familiar with RSA 26686? That's the one I utilized the summons for a yeah. And what is the classification of that RSA? Is it a violation? Is it a crime? Or a vehicle to drive? As far as I know, it's a motor vehicle. Though. But a bicycle is not a motor vehicle. Okay, thank you. 
So at no time while I was bicycling, you were within 300 feet to the front of my bicycle? So you never use your spotlight to better illustrate where the bicycles were? When? At any point before uh, while observing the people on the bikes? Yeah, I don't remember that. I don't remember if I used it or not. So you may have used your spotlight while people were on bikes traveling on the beach. I don't remember. Do you remember where I was standing relative to the person on the ground when you were out in the scene? When you were out on the scene, how long was it before you got out of your vehicle? After you exited your vehicle, did you reposition it at any point over the course of the encounter? Describe the equipment that the other bicyclists had. No. Do you remember? You said that they had proper equipment. So, what were you checking for? Lights and reflectors. Okay. And you alleged that nobody had defective rear reflectors, correct? No, you said that. I mean, you don't recall, you don't testify to anybody that had defective rear reflectors. No, I didn't say that. Okay. Do you allege that I ever had a defective rear reflector? So, uh, what did you observe about the lights on the other bicycles? Did they fix the bike? I don't recall. Were they handheld lights? I don't recall. Were they cell phones? I wasn't focused on the other bikes. You weren't focused on the other bikes. So, they got 
less of an inspection as to what bike they had than my bike had. No, I knew bike didn't have a leg. That was your bike. So that's why I called this on you. Can't watch all three people at the same time. Did you notice any saddlebags or compartments on any of the bicycles? I don't recall. So there may have been a pouch affixed to the handlebars on the bicycles? I, I said I don't recall. And the small pouch could be the right size to fit a bicycle like into the grass. Are you asking me if there's a light inside the bag that I, that I didn't see? I'm asking you if a light could potentially be in a bag that you didn't see. I don't think I understand that question. So you don't know if there was a bag that may have been made in order to hold a bicycle light? On your bike? Or any of those. Which one is it? So your bike or the other ones? Uh, you can recall each one. You recall mine? You recall any? I just recalled you didn't have it. But you don't remember about a saddlebag or anything like that. How long was it after you exited the vehicle that you became aware that you were being recorded? Well, after you told me. Okay. I don't know that time frame. Do you remember who engaged you first? Sergeant Pearl, his name, you know, however many times again, I don't believe that that particular 
fact is relevant as to whether or not there was a headwind on the bicycle. Um, but the court does have that as a full exhibit at this time. Right. So just to be clear, this is this is the recording of that night. Yeah. Okay. So I think what would make sense to say. I understand you're trying to tie some things together, but again, there is some question of really the relevance of how many times you asked for his name. However, what I'll do is you will have the opportunity to make that argument kind of as you start now in closing as to how that all ties in. And you can call attention to me what you want, and then when I listen to this, I will have my notes of what it is that you want to highlight for me with your argument. Okay? Thank you. So I may have asked you what uh, for your name three times. I just said I didn't recall. Uh, did you ever answer that question? I, I guess I told you my name. But you may not have ever had it. It's at the bottom of the summons. It's at the bottom of the summons. Do you recall saying that night that your name would be on the bottom of the summons? Did any other Concord police officers arrive on the scene while I was detained? My, another unit might have responded, but I'm not sure. And that other unit that responded uh, may have been reported as they arrived as well? If you report them. Do you recall myself conversing with another officer at the scene?
Yes, I do. Do you recall how you responded to my audio recording in that instance? Objection, Your Honor. <laughs> that is irrelevant, again, to the situation of the headland. So I'll go ahead and sustain that objection. That those questions dealing with this other encounter is irrelevant, other than when you did ask, uh, the day of the stop on the bike, did he recognize you from there? That's fair. But as far as what occurred at that prior stop, that's irrelevant. Sergeant Pearl, are you aware of a complaint filed against yourself on July 9th of 2010? Complaint filed against me? No. <laughs> Do you believe that Audio recorded, sir. Uh, under the new handle, All right, under duress, I will turn it off. Nice. Someone's here for the hmm? Yes. Hey, my name is Garrett. Garrett, are you doing my work? It's unfortunate that that has never got a name. Are you familiar with the blank decision, sir? Objection, Your Honor. The public decision is directly relevant to your reporting the police. Thus, I agree with that. Again, how is whether the other than going to the proof of a, a credibility of witnesses as to what actually occurred, how is the general policy about reporting police officers, how is that relevant to just the specifics of your charge of operating without a head? Withdrawn. How often do you write citations for headlamp violations on bicycles? Well, I'm not part of the patrol division now, so not frequently anymore. You're on the night shift, though, correct? Right? Oh. Do you ever issue warnings or decide against citing individuals for such a violation? Thank 
Lemon, C O E M E N. Anyone can you turn yours up? Concord. Were you present in Concord on June 19th, 2011? I was. Do you remember what you were doing at about 2.30 that morning? I was going on a bike ride with a couple of friends. Who was bicycling with you? You and uh, Barrage that one. Couldn't make it there. So you decided, uh, you and your friends decided you'd be going for a bicycle ride through the neighborhood. What bicycles would you be using? There are three bikes in my garage that we use. And who do the bikes belong to? Um, one to me, the other two to my family. Do you remember if there was any traffic while you were bicycling? No. Do you remember seeing any pedestrians? Uh, no. Did you encounter any people while you were bicycling? Yeah. When do you recall first encountering someone who was not bicycling? We had just left my house, um, came to White Park, we took a left went alongside the park, and then I think it was right, I don't know what street that is, it was, uh, we were going towards Wumford Street in the parking lot of the white park, there was like a light that was shining on us, so it was, it was from a parked car. Okay, so the only person that you recall out that night other than yourselves? No, uh, other than the police officer, uh, officer that showed up. Um, Okay, so you recall seeing someone parked at the White Park parking lot yeah. who shone a light on you as you biked past White Street? Is that the street that crosses along with the, the main parking lot of White Park? If you, if you come out of that, take a left. We were right at that intersection. If you took a right, to the police When you passed when you passed by White Street, do you recall a vehicle traveling on that street? I do not. What happened next? After so we, we continued to ride past the park, we took a right on Rumford Street. We continued maybe like 20 seconds, and then my friend Raj fell off his bike, so we all stopped our bikes so he was okay. At that point, we noticed headlights behind us, so we turned around and uh, it was a police car. Thank you. 
interest from the rent directly back to the house. Do you recall being asked if you possess a red rear reflector? No. Do you recall being asked if you possess a light? Yes. Did your bicycle have a light? Yes. Do you know if any of the other bicycles had lights? I'll say the bikes, by my understanding, had lights. However, my bike was the one I was riding, so I can't attest whether or not the other two had lights that were on and functioning. That's Have you ever before witnessed Mr. Pearl act in a manner on the Mr. Clement was a witness to both this instance and the instance almost a year prior in which Mr. Pearl physically prevented me from reporting it. Right. Again, I, I will sustain the state's uh, objection. This line of questioning is irrelevant to what occurred with respect to the issue of the headlight. Uh, your questions prior to that were fine about did he ask you about the lights and the rear room reflectors. Those are the kinds of questions that are uh, appropriate. Mr. Uh, at any point was the officer in his vehicle with the lights on situated in front of your cell phone while you were operating the bike? No. And do you remember? Oh, sorry, I believe I have other questions. Right. You may inquire. I have no questions for this one. Right. You may step down. Thank you. I have no other witnesses. Right, do you wish to testify on your own behalf? I do not wish to testify. Okay, very good. So you will be the rest at this point. All right. Uh, now you have an opportunity to make a closing argument if you wish to do so. Uh, this would be your opportunity to tie everything together. So I can just gather my thoughts, please. Certainly. There is a very small dispute in the facts, but it's a very critical dispute between Mr. Pearl's testimony and what he believes may or may not have been his location and where Mr. Clement testifies to where Mr. Pearl was when he initially saw the bicyclists. If we refer to the map, the parking lot on White Street is far more than 300 feet from Beacon Street. RSA 26686 specifically states, every bicycle operated on any way during darkness shall be equipped with a lamp emitting a white light visible from a distance of 300 feet in front of the bicycle. At no point was Mr. Pearl in front of the bicycles shining his light or even observing them. He testified that he saw them from the side and approached from the rear. At no point did Mr. Pearl bring up a def uh, defective issue with the red reflector, with the statute, which the statute goes on to require. A red reflector on the rear of a type approved by the director, which shall be visible from a distance of 300 feet to the rear, when directly in front of the lawful upper beams of headlamps on a motor vehicle. Mr. Pearl does not remember whether or not he shown his light from the white park parking lot. But that is exactly what he did and why Mr. Clement also remembers where he was situated. If you notice, on, uh, this was a fact that Mr. Pearl left out of his testimony. Because when three people are by themselves at night, uh, Mr. Pearl acknowledged there was no traffic. It's very noticeable when somebody shines a very bright light on you. It stands out. So for Mr. Pearl not to include in his uh, written notes or in his testimony today that fact points out that he's 
uh, disconnecting himself from the beginning of the engagement with the individuals. His encounter began when he shone the light. Um, and at that time, he was at a greater distance than he could have observed via the statute the uh, qualifications for the bicycle's headline. Once he arrived on the scene, which he acknowledged from the rear, I was under no obligation to produce a headlamp for him that may have been used for the bicycle while it was operating. During the encounter, if you refer to the defendant's exhibit, the video and the audio from the encounter, I was recording him and asking his name and badge number, which he three times refuses to provide. When another officer arrives on the scene, he then cuts off that officer from giving his name, which I believe demonstrates an animus. He knew who I was when he arrived on the scene. He was aware that I had filed a complaint against him for assaulting me in the past. And this was a very silly, petty way to just inconvenience my life over a bicycle light. Mr. Pearl responded to the recording. If you notice in the recording the amount of time in which he focuses on my two friends who actually were engaged in something that, uh, one was injured, something that you think would have caught more of his attention. But very quickly after I say that I'm audio recording, the focus becomes on me and my friends are allowed to leave. It is only after that point that he inquires about the light and The fact that he's refusing to identify himself and also, I don't know why he refused to allow the other officer to identify himself, it demonstrates a disconnect from the person doing the job and the job <coughs> that he's doing. So he just said his name would be on the summons. Um, it, it was very impersonal. I don't believe it demonstrates professionalism in line with Concord Police uh, Department's mission statement. And the fact that Mr. Pearl was never in a position qualified to judge the headlamp in question, uh, I believe disqualifies this case uh, from, from any reason why it should be found guilty of this infraction. And that is my closing argument. Thank you very much. Your Honor, the issue here today is whether or not Mr. Ian's bicycle had a headlamp on it. And um, as Mr. Ian was reading the statute to you, 26686 says, every bicycle operated upon any way or in darkness shall be equipped with a lamp emitting a white light visible from a distance of 300 feet in front of the bicycle. And goes on to then discuss the red reflector. So first, the statute requires that the bicycle must be equipped with a lamp and that that lamp must emit a light. Sergeant Pearl testified that Mr. Ian did not have a light on his bicycle. Uh, he was riding that bicycle on a way to the city of Concord to, uh, I believe that Sergeant Pearl testified that it was Rumford and Beacon Street. Uh, so Mr. Ian was riding his bicycle on the way to the state of Concord. It was dark, it was raining on that evening, and the bicycle did not have a light on it. So under that statute, 26686, uh, Mr. Ian should be found guilty of this offense. And regardless of whether or not Mr. Ian feels that Sergeant Pearl acted professionally or did not act professionally, it's not the issue before the court, and therefore Mr. Ian should be found guilty. Thank you. Right, I'm going to take this under advisement so I have an opportunity and I will issue a quarter later. Thank you both very much. Please rise.